Hello and welcome to another video. Controversial statement of the day. You don't need to bulk to build muscle. You're not going to lose strength or muscle mass when you cut. If you're flipping your freaking lid and getting mad at me, just take a deep breath. Simmer down. Let's have a quick chat. And at the end, if you still hate me and hate this idea, you can go on your merry way and that's totally okay. But this could benefit you to build more muscle. So open your mind to this for a second and listen to a madman ramble on. First off, Matt, why then is it so popular to bulk? Why does everybody think you need to bulk to gain muscle? Why is everybody talking about, I'm on a cut, I'm losing strength, I'm losing mass, I'm looking flat. Who are the most popular people influentially in the muscle building space? Right now, probably somebody like Chris Bumstead, 25 million followers on Instagram, the top muscular wise male physique going back in time a little bit ronnie coleman muscle monster of a man <laughs> we go back even further arnold Schwar schwarzenegger the goat in many's eyes all of these individuals a lot of influence a lot of reach they're popular everybody knows who they are what is their reality they got to get down to single digit body fat percentages on stage to show off their physique to try to win the competition. 5%, I don't know, something like that. Incredibly lean, not healthy, depleted in a state where you're not gonna build muscle, you're probably gonna lose some. You're not gonna gain strength, you're probably gonna lose strength. You're gonna feel weak, your body is not in a healthy functioning state. That's their cut, 5%, freakishly lean. And then in the off season, what do they do? I gotta bulk up, add a bit more calories in, get into the 10 to 15%, if you look at Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, Seabum, as examples. What do they look like in their offseason? They're still pretty lean. They're probably in the 10 to 15% range. They're not fat, all right? They still got veins. They still look jacked, but they're just not freakishly lean. In this case, they need to bulk to gain muscle and strength. And when they cut, they lose muscle and strength because they're going from 12% to 4%. Why does this matter to you? Because you are not doing that. The average person who's just trying to gain muscle, look more jacked, the lowest you're getting is probably around 10 because you're not getting on stage. If you go from 18% body fat in your bulk, a little fluffy, and you come down to 10%, do you think that you're going to lose massive amounts of muscle and strength? Or if you're 10 plus, you've got enough body fat for your, function, your body to function normally and healthy, and be productive in building strength and muscle, even if you're in a slight caloric surplus. And only unless you want to go sub 10% and get to freakishly lean levels where you start to deplete your body and become borderline unhealthy for a physical look, then yeah, you might lose strength. But for most of us, it's not going to make a difference. Take me as an example. Recently, I was 12 to 14 to 100, 212 to 214 pounds in the late morning after breakfast on the same scale at the gym for like two weeks straight. I was trying to diet, I kept changing, wasn't working. Wasn't disciplined enough to actually make the changes. And then the past eight days locked in, finally adjusted my nutrition to do the things I needed to do. And today we're 209. So I lost anywhere from three to five pounds in eight days, which is a pretty extreme rate of weight loss. And what's happened to my strength? Today, uh, a few workouts ago, hit a PR. Today, match that PR, almost got more. I'm not any weaker, absolutely. If anything, I'm still able to gain strength, even though I'm in a pretty substantial deficit. How is that possible? Because I'm, 10, I'm still over 10% body fat. I've still got plenty of body fat on my body to function in a normal, healthy way and to be able to productively train and stimulate muscle growth. If I keep going all the way down, and I start getting to eight, seven, six, it's probably gonna change. I'm probably gonna get exhausted, feel depleted, be unhealthy, and lose strength. But as long as I'm still at a normal-ish healthy level, which is what we're all interested in anyways, getting down to 10%, have abs, you're probably gonna be just as strong. And I know this is a small sample size, I've noticed this my whole lifting career, but I'm gonna to continue to cut down to 200 pounds, at which point I'm probably gonna be somewhere around 10% body fat-ish. And if I still have the exact same strength or more, then to me, that's a pretty convincing argument that, all right, if I'm not in some crazy depleted state, then I'm probably not gonna lose strength and muscle. And I probably don't need to get excessively fat and get up to 20%, 30% body fat to gain muscle. 
another point for you to consider, which I think a lot of you could, people could relate to. When you see these transformations and people talking about trust the bulk, you know, and they go into an extreme bulk and they were ripped and lean and then they bulk for like six months over the winter, the winter arc, I'm on the winter arc. Whoa. What are you doing? You're just going to the gym. Nobody cares. <laughs> Sorry. The concept just cracks me up. Winter arc, man. <laughs> What? You drive to the gym and lift weights and then go home? Oh, winter! <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, what the hell was I talking about? I don't even know. I forgot. Um, oh yeah, people that do the bulk and then the cut, and then they look exactly the same as they did when they were initially lean. I'm like, what? What happened? You got all fluffy and looked bigger, and then you trim back down and your exact same body probably doesn't look any different. You know why? Because the Calorie, once you're over 10% body fat, I firmly believe this, the amount of calories you consume, whether it's in a slight surplus, slight deficit, you're bulking or cutting, is not going to primarily influence whether or not you gain muscle. The other factors of how you train in the gym, how hard do you train, how often do you train, how much volume do you do, what kind of tempo, what kind of rep range, how long do you rest between sets, how effectively have you been able to progress your train to make it more and more challenging so that your body responds by building more muscle. And second, what does your lifestyle look like? Do you drink? Do you stay up late and you don't sleep well? Do you do drugs all the time? Are you extremely stressed and overworked? Changing those things will drastically uh, affect your body's ability to gain muscle. Changing them in a positive way. Those are the two major things I've seen for myself and anybody I've trained is get rid of the things that are holding you back lifestyle wise. And then what different things can we do with your training to make it more difficult to stimulate growth? And then make sure that your diet is solid and you're eating a bunch of healthy whole foods, getting a moderate amount of protein in. And if you start to gain too much weight, change something to eat a little less or eat a little healthier. If you're getting a little too lean, you're having trouble gaining weight, make an effort to eat an extra meal. Look up calorie dense foods, peanut butter, just start throwing peanut butter into stuff so that you gain a little bit more weight. But it's not the driving factor of your growth. And the reason that I think this is an important video and what I said in the beginning that's going to help you to make more growth is if you get caught up thinking that, oh, I'm going to bulk through my winter arc and gain a bunch of muscle and then I'm going to cut back down and I'm going to have, I'm going to look way different and freaking 99 times out of 100 you look exactly the same. It's distracting you from focusing on the training changes or the lifestyle changes that are actually going to be much more productive and potent in producing muscle gain. So there's an opportunity cost to the general populace getting sucked into this idea that you must bulk and you must cut. And the reason, again, is because it's become popular because the most extreme physiques that get the most attention do need to do that. And that then gets promoted and becomes common knowledge to the average lifter when that type of belief doesn't apply to your circumstances because you're, uh, you're plus 10% body fat, man. So it's not going to make a difference. Okay, and if you hate this idea, just... There's also a perspective of it that even if you convince yourself that's true, it's probably going to benefit you. Because if you convince yourself that just going into an aggressive bulk is leading to more gain, more gains, is that really healthy? Is that, and you got to cut down, and when you're in a cut, then you're like, oh, I'm going to lose all my strength. And what if you just say, it doesn't really matter that much. I'm just going to eat healthy. I'm going to train insane. <laughs> I think that's a way more productive way to go. And the last point that I'll finish with, um, if you watched one of my recent uploads where I'm talking about considering doing TRT or some kind of testosterone thing. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it yet or not. I got my results back of my testosterone. And if you're, you know, listening to me talk about this and your lived experience has been completely different, you're like, well, that's because Matt's enhanced or he's some freak genetic crazy shit doing that I'm not doing. Here's my levels. Uh, my total testosterone is 450. The range, normal healthy range is 250 to 1100. So I'm in the normal healthy range, but slightly on the lower end. My free testosterone, which is more important in terms of the muscle building process, so far as I understand it, than the total, this, the free testosterone is the more important number, 77.4, range 3, 35 to 155, so even a little bit lower. Again, completely normal, like nothing to be alarmed, and testosterone levels can jump all over the place and everybody's looks a little different. Just because you got a lower number doesn't actually mean that you're like less healthy or you're going to have less vir virility or whatever, or you can't build muscle. But it's definitely not high. It's, you know, kind of below the middle of the normal range. So, I'm just a regular freaking dude. I got good genetics for training, for sure. But nothing that crazy that makes my freaking ramblings not apply to what you're doing. A bunch of you probably have way higher free testosterone than I do. 
you can comment and, and let me know if you, if you firmly believe, if you're like, no, I don't gain any mass or strength unless I go into an aggressive bolt. And once I start cutting, I'm so fucking weak. I lose like 40% of my strength. If that's been your lived experience, comment below and let me know. But I've never freaking seen that to be the case. Given that you're above 10% body fat, you're not going into some extreme depleted state. I think ultimately for most of us out here lifting that that's a way more productive way to think about your training. And uh, the very last point would be the bulking aspect. I'm going to call some of you out and you're not going to like this, but it could potentially help you to uh, actually make improvements long term. Are you actually bulking because you need to? Or you're just making excuses for your shitty diet? <laughs> Over the past six months, I you know, got a little bit fluffier and closer to 15% body fat or something like that. I don't know, carrying around a little bit of extra fat. It wasn't on purpose. It wasn't because I was actually bulking. But some people would say, oh, you're bulking, don't worry. I'd be like, am I? Like, oh no, I'm just kind of eating cheesies every day because they taste good. <laughs> Is it helping me gain muscle? Fuck no, I don't think so. I should, if I'm consciously bulking, I should eat more calories but eat healthy ones that may actually, you know, produce, make me healthier and build more gains in theory. But could have been easy for me to just go, yeah, I'm bulking, right, I need to be in a caloric surplus, and then justify the continuation of my, you know, shitty eating habits. So how many of you are just feeling good, agreeing with this bulking concept, you can, so you can continue to just eat like shit? <laughs> Called out, man. <laughs> At the end of the day, if you're a little fluffier, it doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not trying to shame you. Like, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. If you're just training to be healthy, you can have some extra body fat. It's not necessarily unhealthy. You don't need to be freaking lean. But if you're convincing yourself that you have to bulk because you just want to eat a bag of chips every night, then that's a problem too. So, food for thought, no pun intended. If you, if you hate it, then that's fair. But at least if you made it through the whole thing, hopefully it you know, encourages you to rethink this idea of bulking and cutting. Given you're at a normal-ish body fat percentage, is it really the thing that's going to be predictive of your growth? I haven't seen it to be. And when I look around at the clients I've trained or any people that are doing these bulk and cut transitions, I don't see it as the main driver. I think training, the way you train and your lifestyle are way more productive and potent in producing gains. And that's what you should focus your energy on. And diverting that energy away from this bulk cut kind of idea culture because of the popular bodybuilders and their circumstances being different. You get the whole freaking spiel. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps you to go out there and make some more gains. Stay tuned. I'm shredding all the way down to 200 pounds. That's my goal. At which point I think I'm gonna have like, you know, dialed in six pack, which is the aim. And in one of the previous videos where I talked about, you know, you don't need to bulk and turns out I was on a lean bulk and everybody got all upset. I gained some fat, whatever. I don't think it was the thing that drove my growth, but some people are, you know, disagree, which is fine. And uh, a lot of, you know, I asked like, well, how much, uh, I gained 25 to 30 pounds total. How much of, you, <laughs> of it do you guys think is muscle? And like at best, people were giving me 10. A lot of people were like five, three, three pounds of muscle, 27 pounds of fat. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, it's hard to be objective with your own physique, but I'm looking at it, the transfer me. I'll put the link in the video if you're curious. I'm like, oh no, man, I didn't get, you can still see my abs. Like I didn't get that much fat. Um, but anyways, I was like 180 to 185 at like 10-ish percent body fat. And then it was up for debate what I got up to. But if I get back down to 200 and I got ripped abs, then that means I gained 15 to 20 pounds, you motherfuckers. So we'll see, maybe I'm wrong. Curious, either way. You know, maybe I gotta get down to 195 to look that way again, and then that'll kind of show what the truth is. But we're gonna see, we're gonna find out. Have a great day. If you wanna do the arm program, link is in the description. You know, do all my arm workouts, follow the courses, grow your freaking pythons. At the end of the day, just get in there and train hard. But if you're looking for some structure to help guide you, it could be useful. But I'm not telling you you need to do it. Otherwise, you're not going to get big arms. All the shit you need to get big arms, I give away for free on this channel. You know? It's not that complicated. There's too many people overcomplicating it, selling you on sophisticated programs. Okay, you got it. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Peace.